I'll tell you what, this Android app is pretty darn cool. Welcome back, folks. Today we're going to take a look at the new Max Peating Rods MXR 4000 GT inverter generator. Now, they make this one in a non-GT version, but this one's the GT, so therefore it has dual fuel capability between propane and gasoline, and it has electric start, and you're also able to start and stop the engine via Bluetooth from the app on your smartphone or tablet, whatever you may have for a smart device. The specs on this, and I have a full sheet of specs that I'll put up on the screen here eventually so you can pause it and read them for yourself if need be. But you can see the, uh, but you can see the main specs. It has uh, 4,000 peak watts on gas and 3,600 peak watts on propane, 3,200 rated watts on gas, and 3,000 watts on propane. It's 120 volts, 60 hertz, 145 cc engine. It holds uh, 1.1 gallons of gas, about a half a quart of oil, and you can see the package dimensions there. Here's a look at the packaging that it comes in. Pretty nice packaging. Let's get this opened up and see what comes with it. Okay, so the generator comes with a propane hose and regulator. And one end hooks to your propane tank, the other end hooks to your generator on this port right here. That's the propane connection. It comes with, uh, if you want to make your own cord, it comes with a 120 volt, 30 amp twist lock male plug. It comes with a 120 volt, 15 amp male plug. And it comes with an adapter to go from 120 volt, 30 amp twist lock to 120 volt, 30 amp RV style plug. It's an adapter comes with a funnel. This particular funnel has threads and a rubber O-ring on the end. So you screw this in to the oil fill hole and pour your oil in this end. But this also acts for your oil drain. So when you want to change oil, you screw this into the engine fill hole, and then you just kind of tip the generator on its side, and this will pour down into your drain pan. So you use this for filling and draining. Comes with a tool kit, spark plug wrench, and a screwdriver. Comes with a set of parallel cables in case you want to parallel this generator with another similar inverted generator. Comes with a postcard. It has their USA phone number, email address for support, their website. Comes with a cover in case you want to store your generator outside and keep the, keep the weather off of it. Comes with an owner's manual which is fairly decent. And then of course it also comes with a warranty statement. Okay, on the face of the generator, you have your fuel source switch, so you can switch between propane and gasoline. Your propane connection, a 120 volt 30 amp outlet, a circuit breaker, a 120 volt 30 amp twist lock outlet, your two parallel ports, your grounding lug, your main on off switch. This generator does have a battery for electric start, so that's your main on off switch. You got your USB-A and USB-C charging port, your start-stop button, you've got a fuel gauge here to tell you your fuel level, you've also got a built-in power meter, and you've got a reset button for the meter, and this is your, this bottom one here, this little circle with the green on it, that's your low idle switch, and then across the top of the front main panel, there's a, it's like a dome light. This, this switch here, if you turn that switch on and off, that will turn this light on and off. So if you're out here working in the middle of the night, you can turn that light on and it'll light up what you're doing so you're not fumbling in the dark, which is pretty cool. Up here on the top of the generator, I'll show you a picture here. There's a, uh, an access port, an easy access port for changing spark plugs if you need to. This side is going to be your battery connection, your oil, your oil fill and drain, uh, more access to your spark plug. Everything you, for maintenance-wise, everything is done in, in this side here. And on the back, you've got your, your vent for air and along with your engine exhaust with a spark arrestor. Uh, this side panel also comes off, but in order to get this off, you need to fumble with this rubber grommet around the fill cap. You need to take the center screw out of this selector knob and then, of course, your two screws up here. And this panel does come off, but the good news is, like I said, most of the maintenance 
stuff is done on the other side. So you don't really ever have to fumble with this side. I already took the screws out, but let me take this side panel off and show you inside here. A couple things I want to show you. So right down here in the bottom is your oil fill and drain, and you unscrew the black plug there, and that has a built-in dipstick on the end of it. Then over here, there's this cable, which was, when I opened this up originally, this was tucked way in here, but there's this cable here, and then there's a cable here. Both of these have a plug on the end. You unplug both of these caps, and then plug the two together, and that connects the electric battery. So the electric battery is already installed from the factory. You just need to take this cover off, pour oil in it, connect the battery, put gasoline in here, and you should be set to go. All right, I'm going to get this thing filled with oil and gas off camera. You don't need to see me do that, and you guys know how to do that. And then momentarily, we will be outside doing some electrical testing with this new generator. All right, folks, I got the generator set up outside, and I'm filming in the garage with the garage door shut because I'm trying to record this voltmeter on my portable distribution box, my Samsung tablet to show you how the max speeding rods generator app works and I'm also trying to record my oscilloscope and I, I get a sun glare so I've got the garage door shut I've got the generator outside I've got my 30 amp portable distribution box plugged in I've used that in other videos in the past and I made a video about it uh, a few years ago when I built this box and I'll put a link for that video down below if you're interested in seeing that but we're gonna run a load test here and I've got two electric heaters over here on the left each one of them has a high and a low, and at low is 750 watts, high is 1500 watts. So together, it should be about 3000 watts. And then I've got these two heat lamps here on a dimmer switch, and, and that should give me enough wattage to crank it up to the 3200 rated running watts of this generator. And to show you how this app works, this is the app, and there's a, a meter on here to show you the power that's being drawn. There's a fuel level sensor in the generator. It has 95 percent fuel, 124 volts, 60 hertz. And then you can also start and stop the engine from here and you can also turn eco mode on and off. Now these heaters aren't exactly 750 and 1500 each because there's an electric fan motor in there that draws some power but it's real close to 750 on low, 1500 on high, give or take. So let's start with the first electric heater and put it on low. Let me scroll this app down here. And you can see it's pulling, on the app it says 787 watts and on my meter, on my power distribution box it says 784. So we're within a few watts either way. This, and as you can see the uh, oscilloscope, we're still at uh, perfect 60 hertz and at 123 volts. Let's step up this heater to 1500 watts. So we show 1500 watts on the uh, Max Peating Rods app and uh, still at 123 volts. You can see the electric meter on the distribution box is fairly close. We're still at 60 hertz. Let's go to 2250 watts. You see the app is showing 2220 and the meter on uh, the distribution box is pretty close. We're still at 120 volts, 60 hertz. Let's go to 3000 watts. We're at 119 volts, 60 hertz, 2891. Now we can slowly turn on the heat lamp here and see what we get. This generator is rated to 3200 running watts. Let's see what we can get it up to. If I have enough of a load here. As I crank up the dimmer switch, 31, 3150 roughly. I'm showing 3260 on the meter on the on the distribution box. We're over 3200 on the on the app.
I got 3,300 watts exactly on the on the smartphone app, which is pretty good. We're at 100 watts over the rated maximum. So we'll turn that back down. Turn the turn the heaters down. See, it takes just a little bit for the app to update. It isn't instantaneous. I'll tell you what, this Android app is pretty darn cool. Uh, I wasn't sure how this was going to work when I heard it had this ability, and now that I've had a chance to use it, I'm very impressed. I mean, how cool is that to see on your smartphone? I mean, I know there's other electrical devices that have Bluetooth apps. That's nothing new. But I've never seen the Bluetooth app on a generator yet. And I'm not saying it doesn't exist on, a, on other generators, but, it, but to my knowledge, it's not very common. And this is the first one I've seen personally. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. So I turned the generator off. Let's see if we can start it from the app here. Pretty cool. And then it automatically goes to Eco once it gets started. Let's see if we can turn Eco off. There. That did that automatically. It must have been part of a it's uh must have been part of its own startup process. Let's turn it to eco now. And do all that right from the app. And the app is included. This Android app is really cool. It works pretty darn good. Gives you a lot of functionality via Bluetooth from your smart device. If you're in the market for a generator of this power range, be sure to check this one out because it has a lot of features for the price packed into a small package. This one's really hard to beat. I'll put some links down below in the description and in the first pinned comment if you're interested in taking a look at this generator. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Oh, and please leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this video.